the early bird brief for November 7, 2023. Inside DC, number one, mutiny grows at the State Department. In a new leaked State Department dissent channel memo, mid-level staffers criticized the Biden administration's handling of the Israeli-Gaza conflict, saying that tolerance of a high civilian death toll in Gaza, quote, engenders doubt in the rule-based international order that we have long championed. Why it matters. Dissent is growing at the State Department, emboldened by a public split between Biden and Obama on the Israel-Gaza conflict. If the administration begins to criticize the Israeli response now, it will look like they are abandoning Israel and the Biden administration already attempted to push a ceasefire, which Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejected. One career official, Director of Congressional Affairs Josh Paul, has resigned over the policy and more mid-level officials and Foreign Service officers may follow. Number two. GOP Super PAC head, we can grow majority in 2024. President of the Congressional Leadership Fund, the GOP Leadership Super Political Action Committee, or PAC, Dan Constant, said the Super PAC, quote, is in the strongest financial position in its history, and Republicans will hold and grow the House majority. Why it matters. Polling indicates voters in the California, Virginia, and New York seats believe the GOP incumbents are, quote, working to end the chaos in Washington. So the ability of the GOP to hold on to the House in 2024 likely hinges on Speaker Mike Johnson avoiding a shutdown. Individual incumbents tend to poll higher than Congress as a whole, which could also help Republicans hold on to these battleground seats. The Democrats have a clear path to take the House through court-ordered congressional redistricting and the creation of new minority-majority seats as seen in Alabama and Georgia. Number three, House GOP preparing new stopgap bill. House Republicans are preparing a new stopgap bill ahead of the 18 November shutdown deadline that would create, quote, funding cliffs on 7 December and 19 January 2024. Why it matters. Congress is now 10 days from 17 November deadline to pass appropriations bills and keep the government open. Speaker Mike Johnson is under the gun to prevent a shutdown and keep GOP control of the House, but must make a deal that satisfies the House Freedom Caucus to prevent a repeat of McCarthy's ouster from the Speakership. Switch gears to domestic front. Number four, Federal Reserve. U.S. banking system is still vulnerable. The New York Federal Reserve Bank said the U.S. banking sector is stable, but some banks are still vulnerable to funding pressure and capital shortfall. Why, that's, why that matters? Another round of regional banking failures is possible as the Federal Reserve likely maintains its higher for longer interest rate policy through the first half of 24. Investment banks expect the first interest rate cuts in the second half of 24 unless the financial crisis unfolds. Number five. Las Vegas culinary workers prepare for a strike. 35,000 Las Vegas hotel and casino workers in the Culinary Workers Union, CWU, are preparing to strike as early as November 9, Thursday, the first citywide strike since 1984. Why it matters. The last citywide CWU strike lasted more than two months, and with major events like the Super Bowl coming up at the beginning of next year, the union is in a strong position to leverage a new contract with higher pay and benefits. The CWU is part of the, quote, Reed machine, the Democratic political machine in Nevada, which will make it significantly easier for the union to garner political support from state lawmakers. Finally, in domestic, number six, BOFA, B-O-F-A. How wealthy clients are navigating markets. Bank of America reported that in October, its high net worth global wealth and management Clients invested in municipal bonds and asset-backed securities, and they bought shares of energy, financial, and consumer discretionary companies. Why it matters. If rates on U.S. Treasury bonds rise, then risk-averse defensive investors will sell stock, buy more bonds, and wait on deals. But share prices of U.S. mega-cap companies should still hold up as international capital will seek safety in U.S. financial markets. Now we end with geostrategic issues. Number seven, Diamond and Fink, Middle East could trigger a global recession. J.P. Morgan CEO J Jamie Diamond and BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said separately that an expanded Middle East conflict could, end, could tip an already struggling global economy into a recession. Why it matters. A greater Middle East conflict 
could increase global trade restrictions leading to supply chain issues and shortages in the developed world and an economic collapse in parts of the developing world. Number eight, Israeli defense forces split Gaza, prepare to enter Gaza City. IDF managed to split Gaza on Monday, seizing control of the northern part of the territory and isolating it from the southern half. Why it matters, Israeli forces are likely planning to take Gaza apart in sections, allowing them to isolate Hamas fighters and destroy their infrastructure before proceeding to follow sections of the country. Despite UN efforts to browbeat Israel into accepting a ceasefire, it is highly unlikely that Israeli leaders will agree to even a temporary halt in fighting before Israeli and foreign hostages are released by Hamas. Israel has gained and maintained the advantage, but the mounting civilian casualties could set a friction point that Iran and its proxies cannot ignore. A wider war in the Middle East will likely lead to significant energy and supply chain disruptions that will impact the U.S. and European economy. Number nine. Ukraine, Zelensky says no elections during wartime. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, in a nightly video address, told Ukrainians there would be no elections while the country was at war with Russia. Why this matters. Many nations have held elections during wartime, and Zelensky's claim that it would be inappropriate smacks of authoritarianism at a time when his defense and national security cabinet were under investigation for corruption. Previous discussions of Ukraine's membership in NATO highlighted Kiev's lack of democratic process as not to EU standards. With several Western nations already urging Ukraine to seek a negotiated settlement to the war, Zelensky could end up being replaced by a more compliant leader, one who's willing to follow the lead of Kiev's primary patrons in the West. That is the end of the early bird brief for Tuesday, November 7th.